Hi, Askin RDC here, and in this video, we'll be going over the highlights of the Start Guide booklet that is given to you when you enlist into the Navy under the Delayed Entry Program, or DEP as it's commonly referred to. If you do not have this booklet, you can easily find it with a quick Google search, and it is highly recommended that you look over it and memorize information in this booklet. This will greatly help you be more mentally prepared for boot camp. Now the version I am using might look slightly different than yours as the book often changes its design. However, the information we'll be going over today has not changed in a long time, such as ranking recognition and the 11 general orders. Starting off with one of the first few pages, you will see the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Here you will see more detailed explanations of each, but it's more important to take away that the Navy core values are honor, courage, and commitment. Next, we will see the 11 general orders. You will need to have these memorized. All Navy personnel have this memorized word for word and will be able to say them out loud at any given point in time in boot camp. This is especially true on watch. They may ask you for one at random or all 11 of them. It may sound like a lot to memorize and it may take a few seconds for you to say correctly when you're on watch, but it's important part is that you get it right and try to memorize these word for word. On this page, you will see two more items that you will need to have memorized, the Sailor's Creed and the RTC Maxim. The Maxim is short and easy to memorize, but the more important is the Sailor's Creed. You will be saying this on almost a daily basis, at least in boot camp. It is a creed explaining our position, our code, and our conduct of commitment. Another major point to memorize is the RTC chain of command. Now, everywhere you go and every duty station you are assigned to, you will have a chain of command. It is important to know who you work for for multiple reasons. This way, you know who your boss is, who is giving you orders, and who to make requests through. This isn't like Walmart or a civilian job where you'll never see your general manager or CEO, although you won't be bumping into the higher chain of command, such as the president or the secretary of defense, you will be seeing your commanding officer and those that work for him or her. So it's important that you recognize who they are, especially on a small ship or a small command. These personnel and their names and ranks will be given to you when you are assigned to your RDCs or even sooner. Other than recognizing their faces, what will help and is necessary for you to memorize and understand is rank and recognition. This includes enlisted, chief warrant officers, and officers. Even if they aren't in your chain of command, you need to know these so you can learn the basic descriptive rank and devices in order to render the proper greeting. The most annoying part of being an RDC, or not the most, but one of them, is when a recruit salutes me and I'm not an officer or calls a chief a petty officer or a petty officer a chief, which is a really great way to get an earful of information and awareness. Continuing on the subject of leadership, you and your fellow recruits will, while in boot camp, will be given positions within the division. Each have roles and responsibilities that make running the division a smoother process. For example, the recruit chief petty officer, or the RPOC for short that we will be calling him, because it used to be called recruit petty officer in charge, but RPOC is a lot easier to say. The RPOC is the recruit in charge of the division. Although there will be many times when the RDCs need to address the whole division or just simply take charge whenever, the RPOC that earns the respect of the division and works hard is a better tool to use for us. If I need my division to accomplish a few tasks, then get ready to go out and practice marching, later on in boot camp, I'm not going to be giving out those commands. I would call my RPOC, tell him or her what I wanted done, and they would take charge while we get ready to go out and march. If you can't get that done, you'll get fired and a new RPOC will get assigned. When I think back, I believe only once I, have I chosen an RPOC from the beginning of boot camp that held it down all the way to the end. Usually I go through quite a few RPOCs before I find the one that can do the job. And this is true with a lot of the, chain, the recruit chain of command. This rotation of the recruit chain of command and not just the RPOC happened towards the beginning of boot camp. So by the second half, you have a recruit chain of command that can hold it down and perform the job, and they usually don't get fired. So if you want a job and you aren't the first choice, just stay strong and motivated, and you might be able to take up the mantle of the person that either fails or underperforms. Here you see some basic facing movements, which is how you stand, stand at attention, turn, you take off your cover, also known as a hat, or put it back on. Your recruit... The recruiter will be able to demonstrate these uh, very easily. So if descriptions aren't clear in this book, they'll be able to help you. Now, I did just state cover, and I explained to you that was a hat. Uh, that would be an example of naval terminology or jargon, if you will. Cover has two meanings, for example. It's either the action of putting on or taking off your headgear, or it is the headgear itself, a cover or to cover. Some of this 
what you see here probably you've heard before uh, by someone else or in a movie or a TV show. This is our daily terminology used within the Navy. You might say, go to the janitor's closet, grab a mop and a bucket and clean the floors. In the Navy, we say, go to the gear locker, grab a swab and a Cadillac or a caddy and swab the deck. A hat is a cover, shirts are now a blouse, pants are trousers. Making sure you incorporate these terminologies into your daily vocabulary will help you understand and move more on the fly. Now this next slide has a lot of basic information of what to bring and what not to bring to RTC in the slide after this as well. And I'll try to cover it to the what I think people usually bring up questions, but if you have any more questions, leave in the comments below. But bringing it up here, uh, these list of items usually change, especially with the environment we are now. Before we couldn't, we tell people that you had to send the books home or throw them away or donate them. And then for the two weeks that you were in ROM or restriction of movement or isolation, you could keep those books to kind of help kill the time. Uh, but that's slowly going back to the original way where you could not do that. Uh, but a few things never change that we'll go over now. For example, is money. I don't re recommend bringing cash or a checkbook, but if you have a debit card attached to the bank account that you want to either your Navy paycheck to go through or you have money, you want to bring that. I don't recommend bringing cash because you could lose it. Um, losing your card, no one can really steal your money that way unless you know your PIN. But if you don't have a bank account, then yes, do bring cash. However, when you first arrive, you will be given a Navy Eagle card is what it's called, and sometimes that name changes, but it's a prepaid card that you can use to purchase your basic hygiene products, uh, shaving cream, razors, deodorant, feminine hygiene products, shampoo, so on and so forth. If you don't have a bank account or you want to switch, during the first week of boot camp, you'll be given an introduction by two banks, Navy Federal Credit Union and Armed Forces. Those are two really good banks. Um, I'm not promoting them or anything like that, but the benefit to these banks is the fact that your hometown bank might not be in Japan or it, your hometown bank is only in Texas, but it's not in California. But what if you get stationed in San Diego? Of course, you'll still be able to access your money through your ATM card. However, you if you need to go into a, a branch office or anything to discuss something for such as a loan or a discrepancy with your with your money it might be a little more difficult especially if you're overseas so my recommendation is to switch to these bank accounts but that's just for making it easier for you to manage your money but you can always do what you want i'm once again we're not sponsored by these banks or anything like that i just that's the recommendation i would give because it makes it easier for you to handle your money and the last thing you want to do is worry about money when you're trying to do a job However, having a bank account is 100% necessary for you to be able to get paid by the Navy. The Navy doesn't give out checks anymore. Uh, you need to have a bank account. So if you want to switch or you do not have one, that opportunity will be given to you in boot camp, and it's a pretty smooth process. Uh, skipping over repeating of the checkbook or ATM cards, we just talked about that. You need to have your photo identification. Uh, you need two forms of identification, and there's going to be columns that your recruiter will show you the list of each, and you need to bring two of each, and they need to be current. Now, a Social Security card doesn't really expire, but your driver's license or your passport, if you're bringing that instead of your or a state ID, make sure those are up to date because even though you have it, if it's expired, it doesn't work, and that causes complications. And it's important during the first week to have you process into the Navy so that you can get your military ID and start getting your pay and start setting up all your coverage for medical bills and everything like that. Speaking of medical for prescription drugs that uh, you should run through your recruiter first before you bring them, but they might tell you just to bring them anyway, just in case so you can show them to medical and then you can get them reissued to you as well, or they will tell you to stop taking them. It depends on the, I'm not a doctor, it depends up to the doctor and then in the Navy rules. If you are religious, you're uh, and your religion has a Bible of some sort, or some religious text, as we like to say, you're authorized to bring that as well. But don't bring anything too large, as you will be able to store it inside your rack, because your rack is split up into like a, a large locker. Um, you'll be able to store it in there, which will free up room in your A and B drawer, which is a security drawer that you pull out or lift up, and it locks with a lock, and only you have the key. This is where you keep all your personal things like your ID that you'll be carrying around, your money. You won't be really carrying that around. If you have letters, you put it in there. Some people put their shampoo in there. It starts to fill up pretty quick. And if you have a large religious text or if you have religious clothing, um, you'll have to put it in there if it's too large. So just bring a pocket Bible would be recommended. And the, the chaplain on base can also bring you religious texts as well of your religion, which makes it easier if you don't want to travel, if you have like a personal Bible that was given to you as a gift and it's kind of expensive, whereas meaning you don't want to get damaged, feel free to leave that at home and they'll be able to provide you with your religious texts as well. Here you will see 
um, more specific female items uh, to shorten it because uh, it's a pretty long paragraph and list of things. For females, bring any hygiene products you prefer, such as tampons or pads or any specific hair care products you have to help maintain within the Navy standards. Although they do sell all these things at the uh, Navy Exchange or Next for short, and you will be making multiple runs to the Next to be able to uh, get more of these if you run out or need more or you didn't bring any. Um, but yeah, they provide it there. So you can bring it if you want, but understand that each thing is liable to, hey, no, you can't have that. But as far as basic feminine hygiene products, they do provide it at the Next, and there shouldn't be a problem with you bringing your own. Um, you can also see the list of things that will probably be thrown away when you arrive. So f females, if you bring too much makeup or the wrong kind of makeup, they'll probably ask you to throw it away. Uh, you're only allowed to, allowed to wear makeup two, maybe three times, and it's for photos and graduation. And even then, it's kind of conservatively. The Next does sell makeup. However, what I've been told, it's not the best selection. But my previous recruits that are now sailors have told me it does get the job done. So, of course... You can bring your own makeup if you want, but that will go into your A and B drawer, which once again can start filling up. Uh, another thing that we haven't really talked about is a prepaid card you, uh, for phone calls. You'll be given a certain amount of phone calls throughout boot camp. Your first one, you can bring your cell phone and use it when you first arrive to say, hey, mom, hey, dad, or whoever you're calling and saying, I arrived safely at Recruit Training Command and nothing's wrong. I'm starting my boot camp. I'll call you again on my next phone call with the prepaid call. Then you'll have to pack your stuff away into a box. The box used to be shipped home, but that caused complications and it cost the Navy money and it cost the people money as well, shipping it back and forth. Now you'll just put anything that you can't keep with you that you don't want to throw away or donate and you put it into this box and it gets taped up, uh, secured and stored. And then at the end of boot camp, you'll get all that back. Uh, so don't worry about having to throw away your phone or I definitely wouldn't wear your nicest clothes to boot camp because you're going to be putting them in a box and they're going to go in storage for multiple months. So uh, just definitely wear something comfortable. So if it's cold out during the winter times, make sure you wear a warm jacket or a sweater. Um, but don't bring too much stuff as this box isn't really that big. I don't know the exact dimensions, but uh, you can definitely fit a lot in there. But don't don't bring your laptop and everything like that. Just a phone and your basic clothes on your body and what it was necessary for you to bring. And if you want all, to keep all that, you just put it in the box, goes into storage, you get it back in at boot camp and you're good to go. A uh, phone card is necessary as well. A uh, $20 phone card is recommended. If you don't buy one before you arrive, you can get one at the phone center when you're allotted the phone calls. They sell them. Uh, don't If you do buy one before you come, like a $20 phone card is good. I've seen people come with $300 phone cards, and I think they used like $40 of it, and there goes $260 worth of calls. Like You're, you're going to be wasting your money. So if you bring one before... Just, that's fine. Just don't go breaking the bank doing it. And if you think it's not enough, don't worry. You can buy more while you're there. And then additionally, some of the basic things that you can't bring is alcohol or tobacco products. Now, you, if you end up staying in a hotel and, you, and you're a smoker or you dip or vape, whatever the nicotine products are that you use, you can use that. But then when you arrive at boot camp, you're going to have to throw that all the way. If you bring any medication such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen, um, Advil, you're going to have to throw that away as well. Um, so don't worry about trying to stock up on those things to bring in. Uh, if the, if you really need it on a regular basis, more of a prescription style, you just talk to the medical provider when you go through medical and they'll be able to give it to you if it's necessary. On this page, you can see it talking about physical readiness and swim qualification. Now I have already made a video on preparing for boot camp that talks in detail about the physical readiness, but I do want to touch here on the swimming portion. You will be given a very basic swim test in the beginning of boot camp, such as floating and being able to swim about 50 meters. If you do not pass, you will be given multiple chances throughout boot camp to pass it. Um, and there will be remediation classes as well, but it's highly recommended you learn how to swim and basic float before you come to boot camp. You don't want to be missing and catching up and possibly getting set back in boot camp for not passing the swim. Although I've only sent about 10 recruits or so back out of the 900 total recruits of trained through 10 divisions uh, during my time that couldn't pass a swim. Um, and then instructors will do the best to help you pass, but it's still, you're learning in your local swimming pool or asking a friend will help out a lot. It's better to pass the first time. Additionally, if you have a fear of the water, uh, don't worry. Most of the instructors are SEAL or SWIC, which is our Naval Special Forces. Um, which obviously make great lifeguards, and they take the job very seriously. Sometimes we have rescue swimmers as well working there, um, and they're trained to save people in freezing waters in the middle of the ocean with rough seas and really bad weather. 
you're going to be in a heated pool. So you're in a pretty safe environment. And that was a basic overview with a few highlights on the start guide. Make sure you prepare yourself as much as possible physically and mentally for boot camp. As the more prepared you are, the better experience you'll have during boot camp, and it won't be such a rough ride. Uh, and I hope this helps along your journey. Let me know if you have any additional questions down in the comments below. Hoo-yah, Navy!